welcome back today we will discuss a new lesson which is titled how do organisms reproduce now in the previous chapter life processes we have differentiated between a living and a non living being living beings they show metabolism which are absolutely required for their growth and development and living beings can also reproduce which non living beings cannot so reproduction is also one of the important processes for a living organism but it is not absolutely required you know of organisms which are sterile or human beings who cannot reproduce they can still live isn't it so then why do organisms reproduce what is the importance or significance of reproduction before that let us understand the definition of reproduction as the word itself says to produce again reproduction is a biochemical process because it takes place in living organisms therefore bio chemical process because one of the important events that takes place during reproduction is dna replication which we will discuss in a short while from now therefore it is a biochemical process where a parent gives rise to an offspring similar to itself of course the production is required for continuity of species imagine an organism like bacteria which is an unicellular organism or amoeba imagine they cannot reproduce what would happen these organisms wouldn't exist today isn't it therefore reproduction is required for continuity of species reproduction produces certain variations in the organisms these variations when they accumulate over generations together it is responsible for evolution of species so what are these variations how are these variations created and how these variations are useful for an organism or for a species we will discuss in the mechanism of reproduction so what are the important basic events required for an organism to produce an offspring similar to itself when we say similar what does it mean means they look alike take for example two rose plants both of them have green stem which have thorns on them and they have leaves and they produce flowers but the number of leaves the length of the stem etc number of flowers produced this could change but these individuals they have the same body plan that is their similarity how do two organisms have the same body plan or the body design that is because of an important event called as dna replication when a cell is about to divide the first event that takes place is the cell creates a copy of its own dna that is dna replication replica exact copy the information for the body plan or body design is present in the genetic material that is dna this dna it carries the information required for the production of proteins these proteins will then help in the body design or body organization if this dna will be passed from parent to the offspring the offspring will also have the same body design but just having the 
DNA from the parent cell will not help it to make the proteins required for the body design because this DNA needs to use other organelles for the production of proteins. Therefore, along with the distribution of DNA, the other cell apparatus are also divided. For example, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi bodies, mitochondria, if it is in the plants, then chloroplast, all these organelles are also divided. Along with the DNA, these organelles are also distributed equally to the new cell. Using the cellular apparatus, this DNA can then produce proteins giving rise to a similar individual. Now important point to note here is they are similar but they are not identical. Very very important. Why are they not identical? Because during this mechanism of DNA copying, when the DNA divides to produce a copy, there are certain errors in the copying mechanism. So, when this DNA is passed on to the daughter cell, this errors will result in variations, meaning these are similar but they carry certain changes which are different from the parents. These variations will accumulate during every cell division because before every cell divides, DNA has to copy itself. So variations will increase, point number one. These variations are passed from one generation to another generation. They produce their variations. Together all these variations accumulate over time and they result in production of a new species, evolution of a new species. Therefore, variations are required for production of new species. These variations are a result of the event of reproduction. How are variations helpful for an organism? Take an instance of say a population of bacteria that is living in a particular habitat. Okay, So the DNA helps them to adjust, adapt and reproduce in that given environment. If there is sudden change in the temperature in the environment or habitat in which they live, then what would happen? If the bacteria are not able to adjust to this new temperature, the entire population would be wiped off and the entire species would be destroyed and would become extinct. But some bacteria in this population they will have variations. Using these variations, they can adjust to the new changed temperature. So, they can survive in the new temperature. This bacteria will then reproduce and, and they will continue to live and survive in the area. Therefore, variations are helpful in adapting to the changes in the environment. Of course, variations did not always be useful. There could be variations which are simply there in the organism. Unless until there is an environmental condition created, these variations do not show up as drastic changes. They are present in the organism. Therefore, we can say that variations are required for a species, but they are not absolutely required for an organism. In the case of the bacteria, you see only few bacteria survive and they were responsible for reproduction and continuity of the bacterial species. Other bacteria which did not have the variations, they died. So variation is not required for an individual but it is required for a species. Even though reproduction is a time consuming, energy consuming process, organisms produce copies similar to themselves because it is required for continuity of species and it is required for evolution of species. Let us now look at the different modes or types of reproduction present in unicellular organisms as well as multicellular organisms.
let us first discuss about reproduction in unicellular organisms take for example bacteria or amoeba so the cell division itself is a form of reproduction in these unicellular organisms for example take the case of amoeba as you can see in the diagram cell division in amoeba it takes place in three steps first the cell enlarges it increases in size this is because as you already know the organelles they are dividing then the nucleus will divide called as karyokinesis after the nuclear division the cytoplasm will divide resulting in cytokinesis at the end of which one amoeba produces two amoebae this is what is called as fission amoeba it produces two amoebae this is what is called as binary fission by means two in the case of amoeba the cytoplasm can divide anywhere there is no specified spot where the division has to take place it can take place in any plane whereas in the case of leish mania the division is longitudinal it takes place in a vertical plane parabishian there is another type of fission which is called as multiple fission in the case of plasmodium what happens is the single cell the nucleus it divides this nucleus keeps on dividing repeatedly producing the multi nucleate condition not only that the outer most covering it is covered by a thick wall called as the cyst this cyst will help in the protection from harsh conditions present in the outer environment which is not seen in binary fission when the conditions are favorable each nucleus is surrounded by a cytoplasm the outermost cyst it breaks open and these are released outside so there are literally hundreds of individuals that are produced by multiple fission in slightly higher organisms in multicellular organisms take for example algae example for algae is spirogyra it is a green colored algae that lives in water in spirogyra when the cell reaches maturity what happens is the cell breaks into pieces and each piece can then grow on to become a new individual spirogyra this mode of reproduction is called as fragmentation fragmentation is useful only in organisms which do not have a well organized body design meaning in spirogyra the cells are not organized into tissues therefore it can afford to break itself and its fragment will produce a new spirogyra in higher organisms we know that cells are organized into tissues tissues are organized into organs and organs are present as organ systems and each tissue and organ has a specific position and location in the body so they cannot go for methods like fragmentation next mode of reproduction is regeneration in some organisms and in some animals the lower animals new individuals can be produced by parts of the body for example in planaria tapeworm hydra if you look at the diagram of division in planaria if you cut the planaria into pieces 
each piece can then regenerate into a new planaria now this regeneration is because of the presence of specialized regenerative cells these regenerative cells they undergo division and they produce a mass of cells from this mass of cells then differentiation then takes place producing new planaria budding budding is seen in yeast it is a fungus if you look at the division of yeast there is one single cell this cell divides to produce a outgrowth called as a bud this bud then grows to a certain extent it detaches from the parent body falls down and it continues to grow sometimes you find that there are chains of buds they fail to detach from the body so you can see a chain of buds so budding is a common process in yeast which we use in bakeries budding is also seen in hydra a small outgrowth appears at the basal portion of the hydra this is because once again of specialized cells near the substratum they divide and they produce a mass of cells this mass of cells are seen as an outgrowth called as a bud this bud then grows into a small hydra when it is big enough this hydra will detach from the parent body fall into the substratum and continue its growth this is what is called as budding also in some fungus and in some bacteria we find another mode of reproduction called as sporulation or spore formation this is very easily observed in our bread mold called as rhizopus when we keep bread outside in a moist area we find the bread is covered with the white mat white layer if you observe this white layer under microscope you find thread like structures called as hyphae many hyphae together form the mycelium so that is what we are seeing on the bread a mycelial mat which is nothing but the fungus so you can find thread like structures called as mycelium but this is not the reproductive body from the mycelium it produces a is a fruiting body at the tip of which there is a round spherical structure called as the sporangium inside the sporangium there are hundreds and thousands of spores when the conditions outside are favorable this sporangium bursts open releasing the spores outside these spores then land on the substratum any wood piece or bread or water and they will grow producing their own hyphae and mycelium this is what is called as sporulation now spore formation has two advantages one it produces large number of individuals literally thousands of spores are produced in the sporangium so in a short duration the there is rapid production of individuals number one number two most importantly spores are highly resistant structures they have a tough outer wall outer coat which protects them from harsh temperature extreme water conditions salinity etc so during unfavorable conditions the spore helps to protect the inner contents when the conditions are favorable spore will then germinate to produce a new individual that is the advantage of spores in some plants we find a specialized type of reproduction called as vegetative propagation take an example of a rose plant how do you get new rose plants have you observed this how do you get new banana plants how do you get new hibiscus plants 
so in the case of rose or hibiscus gland we take a small portion of the stem isn't it which is what is called as cutting this stem is then placed inside the root after 10 15 days this stem produces new roots from below and leaves develop so in this case we have seen that a new plant is produced by the stem take for example the case of bryophyllum in bryophyllum leaves are the structures which produce new plants for instance at the edges of leaves we find small roots if you cut this portion and put it in soil it produces a new plant so leaf can also produce a completely new plant in the case of sweet potato the tubers which are nothing but the roots they are cut and they are planted producing new plants therefore in vegetative propagation vegetative parts of the plant such as root stem leaves are used to produce new plants for example in in the case of rose we have cutting even in the case of mango we can use a technique called as grafting where two different stems are joined tied to produce a new plant graft in the case of jasmine we use a technique called as layering a branch is pulled down it is taken to the ground it is covered with soil this portion of stem that is covered by soil it produces new roots you can just cut this stem and you have a new plant called as layering in the case of potato in the case of potato we have small structures from where you find green colored structures coming out these are called as eyes of a potato if you cut this eyes and put it in soil it produces a new potato plant all these are vegetative parts of the plant which are responsible for production of a new plant there are certain advantages of vegetative propagation point number 1 vegetative propagation can be used to grow plants where seeds are no longer available to produce new plants for example in rose hibiscus etc point number 2 the plants so produced from the vegetative parts they are genetically similar to the plant point number 3 it is observed that plants that are grown by vegetative propagation they flower early and they produce fruits much earlier than the plants which are developed from seeds therefore it can save a lot of time labor and money of production this technique is used in laboratory as a tissue culture technique parts of stem leaf root or any part of the plant these are taken these parts are grown in glass jars in a suitable nutrient medium to produce literally thousands of plantlets called as tissue culture so we can produce large number of plants in a short duration now in all these types of reproduction we have observed that new organisms are created from a single individual from a single parent therefore all these types of reproduction they are together called as asexual reproduction there is only one parent involved unlike in sexual reproduction they do not produce any gametes next we will discuss about the second type of reproduction that is sexual reproduction thank you